Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We have got Scott McDonald and David Walton on with me, Hamish Carton. We're going to do it slightly differently this week. We're going to split it into a couple of videos. Um, think of it as a, a double dosage of Scott McDonald. Scott, how are you? I'm very well, thanks guys. Hamish, David, good to see you as always after a nice weekend. Very nice weekend. David, how's it going? Uh, not bad, Hamish. Hope you are well. Good couple of results since we last spoke, so feeling a bit better about things. Good okay. Yeah, I think second video this week we'll, we'll chat generally about what's going on at Celtic. This video I want to focus on perhaps the greatest front three Celtic I've ever seen, certainly in, in recent memory. Um, we're talking, of course, about Abada, Kyogo and Jota. Um, have we got a collective name for the three of them? You know how you get like Barca had MSN and uh, I think Real Madrid had something similar. What's the thoughts on Jack, J-A-K? Is that a goer, lads? No. You're looking for a headline, aren't you? You're looking for a headline. <laughs> no, David. No, no, for me, no, for me. I'm not into all that nonsense. Let's uh, let's wait till it's more than a couple of months of good performances before we start with the the nicknames. Mm. Yeah, I mean they've been incredible though, Scott, haven't they? When you consider these three players were all brought to Celtic in the summer, and the fact that they're now, you know, the, the goals they're scoring. I've got some stats later on in the video, but the goals they're scoring and the goals they're setting up, all three of them, they've just been amazing signings. Yeah, they have. Uh, it's good to, after, you know, talking last week, uh, to see that Abad is, you know, finding with his feet again and growing in confidence uh, within that front three. I think Jota's just really, really took off since we last spoke as well. Fantastic goal midweek. And then back that up again with another another brace over the weekend, he, and he was unstoppable on the weekend. Some of his play, he's just so he's got snake hips, isn't he? He just drops the shoulder. People can't deal with him when he drops it and goes the other way. They're miles behind him. You know, it's really really difficult to play against someone like that. And he, you know what? He shows really really good quality. Um, you know, I was a bit skeptical when we we first signed him in terms of, you know, is he going to have the end product? Is he going to frustrate? He was that type of player that wants to beat someone, but more times than not, he's successful. Yeah. You know, and, and it's great to watch. And that's what every Celtic supporter wants. You know, they want players like that. We, Celtic's always been brought up in, in a rich vein of history of having players like that. And uh, to now have Jota at the helm now, um, it's great stuff to watch, especially when he's in full flight. Yeah, I mean, David, the thing I love about him is his consistency. I think when we signed him, a bit like Scott, we expected him to kind of blow hot or cold, maybe have an amazing game and maybe not do it a few days later. But he's been so consistent. I mean, he's barely had a bad game for Celtic since signing. Um, you know, another kind of criticism that people already had labelled at him when we signed him was, you know, is he going to fancy it? away from home. It's one thing doing it at Celtic Park, but can he do it, you know, at places like Dens Park, smaller pitch? Five of his six Celtic goals have come away from Celtic Park. This is a guy who, if anything, has been putting in his best performances away from home. And, you know, his consistency, as we say, six goals already. I think he's had four or five assists as well. It's, it's brilliant numbers. It is. And that, that, that period you're talking about, the dip in form, it will come. But I think we've we've seen not just from Jota but from Kyogo and from Abada such an incredible adaptation to Scottish football. You know these are three players that came from I think we touched on Abada uh, last week. Totally different football and environments to Scottish football. Totally different vibe. Maybe Jota had similar pressures at Benfica, but with regards to Abada and and Kyogo, it's massive pressure coming in here, and I'm sure Scott can can testify to that, you know, the, the old Glasgow Goldfish Bowls, it's called. And they've all just adapted to it so well. You would think that they'd all been, you'd think they'd had a year under their belts already. I think that's probably the biggest compliment I could mm. I could give to them. Jota is starting to stand out as the main creator, of course he is. And I don't think that, I don't think that it's his, his pace as such. I think when you look at Abada, it's, it's sheer raw pace that he has. That's his main strength. Jota's just got incredible technical ability with his feet. You know, he can be caught up by the fullback, but my goodness, he uses his feet to get beyond them, to go left or right. He's, he's got incredibly quick football in mind about him, um, incredibly quick feet. He's got great decision making. He's link up plays a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And he's got a really good final ball as well. He's everything we could have hoped for, probably a bit more actually. So 
he's had a great start, but all three of them have, Hamish. I don't think we could have imagined just how big an influence the lot of them were going to have. Yeah, I mean, when, when you put it like that with Jota, he does have everything. There's not really a weakness in his game, is there, Scott? I mean, why why has why has he found his way to Celtic? I mean, with all due respect to Celtic, why is he not playing with you know a, a Barcelona or someone like that if he's as talented as this? I think it's still early days. Um, I think there will be moments probably where he will give up possession because of the style of play he plays. He takes risks. He's a risk taker. Um, but again... Celtic have always loved risk takers, people that go and beat people, express themselves, take them on. Uh, at the moment, it's just full of success for him. Um, you've got to remember, he's still very young, Hamish, um, in terms of his development. Uh, and I think uh, he's probably obviously hit that, that point at, at Benfica, particularly where he just wasn't getting in. Uh, mm. He had a great you know, sort of learning curve in the La Liga last year, um, found himself back at Benfica, and it's just not worked out. So... I think it's uh, Celtic's fortune that he's, he's fell, I wouldn't say on their lap, because you have to do your studying and, and you have to give credit where credit's due to, to Celtic in, in finding him and, and finding out that he was available. You know, we're very quick to uh, criticise the club when the certain signings haven't been made or, or certain signings have failed at the football club. Mm-hmm. But, you know, these three signings thus far, and I think probably that goes for the majority who have come in this season, uh, have been excellent. But again, is that because of the recruitment or is that because the style of play and the coaching of Ange Postecoglou? You know, so we have to weigh those two up as well. And I think done a magnificent job in getting the best out of these players as well. Yeah, just in terms of the numbers, guys, because I was kind of researching this for this video and I just think these are amazing numbers. Abad has played 1,507 minutes for Celtic. That's just under 17 games. He's got seven goals and five assists. That's a goal involvement every 126 minutes. Kyogo's played 1,260 minutes. That's about 14 games. He's got 13 goals and three assists. That's a goal involvement every 79 minutes. And Jota's played 1,219 minutes. Uh, Again, just under 14 games. That's uh, six goals and six assists, which is a goal involvement every 101 minutes. So, I mean, these three are all in course for 20 goals this season, the rate they're going. I was looking back through, through the seasons... Any guesses when Celtic last had three players who scored 20-plus goals in a season? I think there's only sort of one error that surely had to yeah. be. It was Sutton, Larson and Hudson. Right. Way before that. You're, t- you're talking well, Kenny, really? da- t- Kenny Dalgleish type wow. times, early 70s. And I mean, as I say, Abad is on seven. Kyogo's, you know, nearly at 20 already. He's in 13 and, and Jota's on six. When you consider all of the games we've got to play this season and how these guys are going to get further into it, I would genuinely back all, all three to hit 20 goals. And on top of that, what is it, 14 assists between the three of them as well? You know, they're, they're just, they're, they're, their numbers are incredible, David. And let's not forget the manager and all this. You know, he's the one that's had to manage these three. And it's not a case of, as he says, just throwing them in every single game. You know, it'd be in an ideal world, they'd have unlimited energy levels and mm. they could play three games every single week. But, you know, he dropped a badder and he stressed at that point in time that he had to give him a rest. He had to in order to refill his energy levels, get his confidence back. When Kyogo was dropped, I've actually been quite critical. But would he have been as impactful in Hungary and against Dundee had he not been dropped? I don't know. Uh, you have to trust the manager and the consistency we are seeing from all three players comes from how well they are being managed. You know, it's not just a case of throwing three players into a team and they're all just doing the business. I'm I'm sure there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes with them from the manager to get them suited to this style of play. And the levels they are showing for me says a lot about how he's managed to integrate them into the team. Yeah, I mean, I think we're genuinely witnessing a, a pretty special, you know, front Celtic front three that we'll talk about for years. If we touch on Kyogo, David, do you know anyone that scored 30 goals in a season for Celtic? No. Scott, do you happen to know anyone? No, no. no. What, what's, it, what's it like to score that many goals? Do you, do you just reach a stage where everything's going in? Uh, I... I I think you have that mentality that that's the case for sure. I think um, when you're scoring week after week, it's it's not, am I going to score? It's, well, how many am I going to get today? You know, I'm going to get 
chances are plenty and I'm, I'm going to score at least one, but I want more than one. Um, I think he's finding himself in that in that sort of vein of form at the moment. You could say you'd have to say against Dundee, he, he took his chances brutally. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. Yeah. He scored yeah. fantastic. You know, he's left foot. He, you know, he, he can play with both feet. He's he's that good. You know, he's he's top level skill on on both sides. Um, but that was probably, I would say. You know, one of his quieter games. He, he didn't really do a lot within the game until he was asked to, which was, you know, be in the right place at the right time and, and score when it comes to you. Um, you know, and, and that was really pleasing for me uh, yeah. because he did a lot of hard work off the ball. Don't get me wrong. He, he always does. He always does the dirty side of the game brilliantly for, for Celtic. And I think that's where a lot of success comes from, firstly. Um, and he's the only one that can drive that at the moment. Yakamakis has to prove that he can do that as well, what he does. Um, but he's he's just going to go to another level. I think he can reach 30. I, mean, yeah. I think your call on 2020 20 and 20 for the three of them, I think that's a big shout. I'd, 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 I'd put a bet on that. We are, I, I don't see Abada reaching the levels of 20, but you know if he can still chip in with you know double figures and keep his assists coming. Remember, we've still got Mikey Johns. We've still got James E. Forrest to really, really push them now. And I can see Jamesy pushing back in there at some point uh, yeah. if he can get himself fully fit. So, again, it's nice to have these these problems. But um, these three at the moment are really, really firing. And what they've all got is pace. Uh-huh. And it kills in the Scottish Premier League, without question, uh, you know, in, in that league. And, and in Europe, it's really causing, you know, some problems as well, particularly away from home. You know, the, when you have to sometimes... You're up against it when teams have more possession and then you can go and hit them and punish them. And we, we've seen that probably midweek as well. Hey, which was Keogh going now? Is at 13? Mm-hmm. He's on 13 goals. You know the scary thing, guys? He was out for a month. He yeah. was out for a month with an injury after uh, when he went away with Japan in September. He could have been closing in on 20 goals almost by now if he was fit for that period. It- and apart start, really apart from games against Dundee, he doesn't score goals in doubles, really, or hat tricks. It's all kind of one goal here or there, which is even better, I think. You know, consistently, I'd love to know the stats of you know how many Celtic matches that he's played. He's actually scored in. It must be you know way up in the 60, 70 percent. His, his record's incredible. Another thing I wanted to bring up is you know Abadis had five assists. Three of them have been for Kyogo. Kyogo's had three assists. One of them was for Abada, and Jota's had six. Three of them were. For for Kyogo and one was for Abada. So just the three of them are just teeing each other up. Um, Scott, as, as a former attacker, did, did you ever, this is a question from you, and did you ever kind of reach a stage where you knew that a combination of forwards was just clicking? Um, because they yeah. speak different languages as well. That That's a thing that no one's really talking mm-hmm. about. And, and on the pitch, they just look as if they've been best pals for years. Yeah, language doesn't matter. That, Does you, it not? Yeah, you, no, you play the language of football. Nakamura never spoke a word to you. So you just knew what he was going to do with it, you know, and you gambled because you knew he had that quality just to put it on your head or put it at your feet, you know. So you would always believe that he was going to get there. You know, Aidan McGee, another one, you knew. Uh, me and Jan had a, a great telepathic reading of each other. I knew where he was going to flick it. Um, but you'd also gamble and you would get confidence because you're playing with top-level players that you know that they can, they can do those quality things. So as a centre forward, particularly, you're always going to gamble and believe more that you're going to get on the end of something. So that that just makes you go even even more across the front post or or you know sprint thirty yards to get in the box because you know it's coming. You, know, you go through periods and if you've been at other football clubs where you've had a, respect, a lesser level of player, you start questioning those things and and you stop doing those things at times. I've done it myself. You know where I should have actually got there. I should have gambled harder. Um, again, that's because your mentality is that the player might not actually have the quality to do that. That's not his fault. You should still do it. But when you play at Celtic, you know you've got plenty of quality there. So for me, that was the reason I scored more goals and I would score a lot of headers because I would just gamble. I knew I knew that they had the quality to do it and I was just going to go. I was all in every time. Right, I'm just going. You know, so, um, and I think Kyogo's probably finding himself in that form at the moment that He's just getting in the danger areas. He knows where it is now. He knows where he needs to be. And uh, the good thing about what I liked about, again, on Sunday was he got two chances and he took them both. 
You know, in, in some games, it, he's missed a few chances. But, he, you know, we all do. You know, I mean, you can't score them all. Yeah. Um, but he, he punished them, you know. And, and again, his movement for his header. And everyone will go on about his, his second goal. But just those those instincts and to, to get away from your marker and be the smallest guy in, in the box and be able to get a free header six yards out. You know, because he's yeah. leading anticipating what, what Ralston's going to do. Or I think it was Tony that crossed it, wasn't it? The first yeah, one. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was. he just gets you know he gambles and he goes early and, and the centre half's nowhere to be seen because he he just reads the play. Yeah, and the other one Ralston puts in, I loved. Jota gets all the credit because he he's breaking in. Kyogo doesn't move into that space. He realises Jota's gone in there and he just leaves it. The centre back's gone with Kyogo and there's a big mm-hmm. space for Jota to run into. That's just you know incredible thinking from Kyogo that that very few people even notice. And he's just so selfless as well. Um, it's brilliant. When you're talking about your relationship with Big Jan there, the, the obvious goal that comes out is that winner against Rangers. You head it over, Jan heads it in. Did you know he was going to make that run when you were trying to head that across? Um, I knew he'd been in the area, um, and it was just my job to get it in, in that type mm. of area. He'd done it tight and again for me. You know, so it was nice to pay the, repay the favour, you know, once in a blue moon. Uh, in terms of you know, giving him that type of assist. But um, I think there's a trust element and these players are now trusting each other. They're trusting each other's qualities, their, their selflessness within that partnerships that they're, that they're having because the relationships are building. Um, that, that's, that's everything, guys. That, that's when you see a team forming and, and, and quality coming because of the belief and the trust and uh, just that, Telepathic communication. You know, you talk about languages and whatnot. It, it doesn't matter. You know, when, when you're playing out there and you're playing that good football and the way you're training and the way that the manager's probably installing it and, and creating these moments uh, within training um, in those high level, high intensity moments, which he likes to do in training. So I, I think um, really, really positive, guys, uh, considering obviously you're going off the back of a Livingston game where you don't score a goal. All of a sudden, it changes again. We're two games down the line. You know, score seven goals in, in, in two games, and and everything attacking wise looks so, uh, you know, with fluidity and and just you know brilliant play. Where the, the you know a week before couldn't score. Yeah. You know, so it's it's just getting that balance right. Um, not getting too too excited about it, but just keep working hard. And if they can keep these three fit, I think. Um, it, they're going to be a real, real scare for, for a lot of teams uh, on the second half of the season. Fascinating insight, Scott. That's why we've got you on the channel. I found that genuinely interesting. Um, just finally, David, any players can break into this front three. Uh, GG, James Forrest, Mikey Johnson, perhaps a, a certain Japanese player, Dazen Maeda. Uh, I think, uh, well, we'll talk about January later, but I think in terms of what's already there, James Forrest still fancy a lot more game time on the right flank, I think, especially with the rotation he'll have to he'll have to do with Abada. I think he's probably the most likely to come out from time to time. Um it's going to be tough for Mikey Johnson to see to get his way into that starting eleven, to get his way into the first eleven. That's it looks like it's shot his place for now. And the same goes with Jack and Marcus. But the, the, they'll all have their roles to play, guys. You know, I mean Scott, you'll know about the importance of having a big squad and having players that can come in. We spoke a few weeks ago about when Samaras joined the club and how big that helped us back in the 07-08 season. So everyone's got a role to play, Hamish. But in terms of that first 11, I think the three in there are nailed down for now. Excellent. Um, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate that. We're going to, as I say, have a, another video just uh, in a couple of days, I think Thursday, um, and we'll chat more generally about what's happening at Celtic. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, please. Thanks for watching, and we'll speak to you soon.